Hi and welcome to Dr. 64. Today we want to take a look at the component in your C64 which plays a major role but is unfortunately also very unreliable, the PLA. PLA stands for Programmable Logic Array. It's a 28-pin chip at position U17, regardless of the SCPCB revision. First, with SCPCB 250-469, the PLA in its typical 28-pin housing was no longer used. Here, the latest and last version of the PLA is used, which also contains other chips such as some logic gates and the color RAM. As you can guess from the name, the PLA includes many logical gates together in one chip. A logical gate can be for example an AND gate, an OR gate, an inverter and so on. In our C64 there are also such multi-logic gate chips like you see here in the 14 pin packages. A logical 0 corresponds to 0 volts and a logical 1 corresponds to 5 volts at the pins of our logic chip. Sometimes two inputs and one output are not enough. You need a more complex logical equation, means you need more inputs and outputs and somehow link the logic gates together. Like mentioned, the PLA includes many logical gates. The great thing is that they can be combined according to your wishes. They are programmable and not fixed like in a 40-pin LS74 logic chip. In the C64 they are all connected together in a certain way like needed to run the machine. Each logical input combination of zeros and ones has one logical output combination. The PLA in the C64 has 16 inputs. That corresponds to 65536 different input combinations. But only about 30 of them are used as we will see later. The early C64s came with the pre-programmed 82S100 by Signetics. Later, Commodore MOS made their own chips, labeled with MOS part numbers. MOS simply copied the chip from Signetics and made a masked version. So the MOS chips were not reprogrammable anymore. PLAs manufactured from 1982 to 1983 are prone to fail because of poor preservation. Over the years there will be corrosion under the protective layer and that damages the die. Later date codes, about 1984, are a little more reliable because Commodore optimized the manufacturing process. But they also suffer from the immense heat they produce because of the high power dissipation. The most reliable PLAs are the so-called super PLAs on the 250-469 shortboards, the multi-chip and chip version with 64 pins. As we can see, the PLA is connected to all the most important chips on the mainboard. The MPU, or nowadays called CPU, the WIC2, the RAM, all the ROMs like basic, kernel and character, the color RAM, the IOs, the SID and also the expansion port because only one chip at a time can read or write data to or from the data bus, each chip individually must be given permission to access the bus. Otherwise, the data on the bus is corrupted. Mainly, the PLA is responsible for selecting and activating the chip which actually has to be connected to the data bus. So the PLA is generating the chip select signals. Furthermore, together with the WIC, it is responsible for the DRAM refresh. Without the refresh, the dynamic memory simply forgets its contents. The MPU and the WIC2 have direct memory access. The PLA is establishing the DMA and is responsible for implementing the C64's memory map and the bank switching. Therefore, also the expansion and cartridge port is connected to the PLA to switch in or out the cartridge ROMs. Now I think we can understand why the PLA is also called glue logic. How does the access to the data bus work between all the RAM, the ROM chips, the MPU, the WIC? Some address areas are shared between RAM, ROM and even IOs. The standard startup memory configuration without the cartridge plugged in 
we can see in the lower part of the PLA logic table. With that configuration of the PLA's inputs, the kernel, the basic and the IOs are visible and accessible for the MPU. If, for example, a cartridge is plugged into the expansion port, the pins XROM and or GAME are pulled low to map the external ROM to the C64's address space, instead of the kernel or the basic ROM. All the switching between RAM, the ROMs and IOs happens within microseconds. As we all know, the PLA is one of the most not reliable chips on our C64's mainboard. And because we now know what the PLA is all responsible for, we can imagine a not properly working PLA leads to a not working C64. And this is only a very small selection of possible error patterns. So are there replacement parts instead of an old original chip? As you see, luckily, yes, there are. More than enough, I think. They are in a price range from about 5 euros for the EEPROM replacement to about 20 euros or more for the Super PLA. More infos and shops where you can buy them, you can find in the video description. And if you want to know more about the PLA or really want to deep dive, then you can find additional information in the description too. Have a look, it's worth it. What you see here are only five of the possible replacements. There are even more. You only need to search the web. But now enough dry theory. Let's probe the signals at the fully working PLA with the oscilloscope and see how they should look like. So now we are here at the bench. Let's start with probing pin 2 because pin 1 is not connected. During our measurements, our C64 is showing the normal basic startup screen. Pin 2 is input 7 and is connected to address line 13. My theory regarding that round edge is to the address lines there are many chips connected and these have parasitic capacities. Therefore the voltage cannot rise fast enough. Pin 3 is input 6 and is connected to address line 14. Here we have the same issue with the round edges. During every measurement I will change the time base so that you get a better idea how the signal looks like. Pin 4 is input 5 and this is connected to address line 15. Pin 5 is input 4 and this is connected to VA14, video address line. Pin 6 is input 3 and is connected to char enable. Our standard memory configuration, this pin has to be high, and that's the case. Pin 7 is input 2 and is connected to high RAM. This has to be high also. Pin 8 is input 1 and is connected to low RAM. This pin has also to be high according to our standard memory configuration. Pin 9 is IO0 and is connected to CAS. CAS stands for Column Address Selection. Pin 10 is Output 7 and is connected to ROM High. This pin is directly connected to the cartridge port.
Pin 11 is output 6 and is connected to ROM low, which is directly connected to the cartridge port. Pin 12. Pin 12 is output 5 and is connected to I.O. Pin 13 is output 4 and is connected to graphics read-write. This is directly connected to the color RAM. Pin 14 is the supply ground pin. Pin 28 is VCC and is the 5 volt supply pin. Pin 27 is input 8 and is the address line 12. Pin 26 is input 9 and is connected to BA, bus available. This line is connected to the WIC and tells the MPU that the WIC will take over the bus. Pin 25 is input 10 and is connected to AEC. Address Enable Control. This pin comes from the WIC and tells the MPU if it can access the bus. Pin 24 is input 11 and is connected to read-write. Pin 23 is input 12 and is connected to XROM. In our standard memory configuration, this pin has to be high. That means external ROM is not active. Pin 22 is input 13 and is connected to GAIN. GAIN is connected directly to the cartridge port and can be used to change the memory map. Pin 21 is input 14 and is connected to video address 13. Pin 20 is input 15 and is connected to video address 12. Video address lines 12 and 13 are connected to the WIC and to the DRAM multiplexes. Pin 19 is the output enable pin of the PLA and is always connected to ground, so is always active. Pin 18 is output 0 and is connected to CAS RAM. CAS RAM is directly connected to all of the CAS pins of all DRAM chips. Pin 17 is output 1 and is connected to BASIC. This pin is directly connected to the chip select pin of the BASIC ROM. In our case, the signal is always high, so the BASIC ROM is not selected. Pin 16 is output pin 2 and is connected to kernel. Here we see the output is temporarily low, so the kernel is selected and active.
pin 15 is output 3 and is connected to char ROM. The signal is temporarily low, so the char ROM is temporarily active. I hope this episode was interesting for you. I hope you may know now a little bit more about the PLA that you didn't know before. If you liked the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up or a comment. Subscribe to the channel for free so you don't miss any of my new videos. Check out the video description for more information about this video. I wish you a lot of fun and stay healthy. Your Dr. 64